artificial selection. Humans have been selectively breeding organisms with desired characteristics for over 10,000 years. Some examples of organisms we've bred include crops that are resistant to pests, but also crops that are resistant to various treatments like herbicides to make sure that they can grow better and have an increased yield. High milk and meat yield cattle, so cattle that are able to be bred and give us a lot of meat, so they have large muscles or a high milk yield. Dogs that can hunt or race or are good for detecting things, um, smell and things like that. Equally, horses as well have been bred for their strength, for racing, for pulling farm equipment. There's loads of examples. You can see an example here as well. So this was a wild brassica plant, and we have selectively bred this wild ancestor of brassicas to give us all different types of the plant and favour that adaptation for it to be larger. So cauliflower is favouring the flower clusters. Broccoli came from artificially selecting for the stem and flowers being bigger. Cabbage was the leaves being really big. Kale was also the leaves being really big. Kohlrabi is the stem being really big. Brussels sprouts is lateral buds on that stem. That's how we get those little Brussels sprouts. So you can see how over time we've changed what one ancestral plant into all of these different varieties. And we do it in the same way. It doesn't really matter what the question is about in terms of asking you to describe artificial selection. The method is going to be the same. You're going to select an individual. Normally, obviously, we need a female and a male. So we're going to select an individual female that has the desired characteristic and then a male with that characteristic as well, if possible, um, sometimes more possible with plants, for example, or in terms of, say, cows and milk. Obviously, male cows don't produce milk. So it could be that the male cow, you select a male cow whose mother had a high milk yield, for example. So once you've got your two individuals with the characteristic you want or an ancestral history of the characteristic you want, then you're going to breed these two together. Then you're going to select from their offspring the best individuals that have the characteristics that you want to see. And then we're going to breed them together. Then you're going to continue this over several generations. It's not going to happen straight away. We need to continue it, repeat over several generations until you have the majority of your offspring coming out with the characteristic that you would like them to have. This isn't done so much anymore um, because we now have modern techniques such as IVF and artificial insemination. So the actual kind of getting two animals or um, together and trying to get them to breed doesn't necessarily have to happen anymore. Um, and even cloning as well. So if we do have an organism that has a desired characteristic, especially with plants, we can clone that organism rather than breed it and try and get offspring to make sure that we inherit that characteristic that we want. So modern techniques has helped change artificial selection slightly so we don't have to necessarily go through that process as much. So we need to know the problems with artificial selection. One of the main problems is that it reduces the gene pool. So remember the gene pool is the number of alleles for each gene in a population. So by selecting for similar characteristics again and again over generations, we mean to make sure that similar alleles are repeatedly being inherited, which is what we want, but that sometimes means that we end up getting a really, really narrow selection of alleles in the population because we keep trying to get the same ones being inherited each time. This leads to something called inbreeding depression where we're reducing the variation in the gene pool. So there's fewer and fewer and fewer alleles in the population. And obviously we know that low genetic variation is bad because we're going to be less likely to be able to adapt to change and that the whole population we've now created could really easily be wiped out by one disease, for example, because it's very unlikely there would be any variation in there that would allow for organisms to have resistance genes. There are some things to be done that can combat this. So outcrossing, that means not repeatedly inbreeding along the same kind of line but taking a different variety or a different organism, maybe something with a similar characteristic, and crossing it into your line that you are doing the selective breeding with. And it helps increase hybrid vigour, which we mean, so hybridising means coming together of different things and just basically introduces variation and makes your ancestry of your organism slightly more robust. And then maintaining the genetic resources of wild types. So we saw that kind of original wild type of the plant that we bred all of the different types of cabbage and broccoli that we have. And 
that wild type still exists. So while still doing the selective breeding, keeping the original and original population of the original genetic variation in that original wild type population is really good because then they've not been selectively bred. They still have all of those alleles that were present in the original population before the inbreeding occurred. And therefore they'll have some of those useful genes and it could be a case of back crossing. So taking that selectively bred organism and trying to breed it back with the wild type to reintroduce some of that variation in the alleles. There are some ethical issues around this then. So artificial selection can exaggerate certain traits leading to health issues. A lot of examples of this are to do with dogs. Obviously we've selectively bred dogs for a very long time from their original wolf population for various things like traits that are good for hunting or dog sledding or whatever it is, but also some aesthetic reasons. So bulldog faces um, are very, very squished and that sort of squished face was a really desired characteristic for some reason, but that has led to their actual bones in their face and their nasal passages being really constricted. And so they often have really big issues with breathing, especially if they get ill or a cold, um, and that can obviously hinder their life and their life expectancy. And so whether it's right to continue to breed these sort of damaged or health issue laden dog breeds is, is a concern. The other issue is through repeated selection of the same alleles that are desired characteristics that we want, that also often means inbreeding increases the chance of genetic diseases. Often it's because there are linked genes with the characteristics and the alleles that we want also coming along with the inheritance of other recessive traits or recessive diseases. Coat colour genes, for example, in Dalmatians have also been linked to deafness. This is just one example, but if you, it makes sense if you select for the same alleles again and again, and you breed animals that have the same alleles again and again, you're going to increase your chances of getting recessive genetic disorders come up because you're increasing the chances of these being having recessive alleles linked to the alleles that you want with the characteristics that you want. And so then you're going to increase the chance of inheriting those genetic disorders. And then once you have a double recessive genetic disorder um, set in your animal, if you breed from that again, then it will pass on that double recessive most likely, especially if you're breeding it with similar animals. So the coat colour genes we think are linked to a gene that a mutation that leads to deafness. This is just one example. There's many dog example, dog breed examples where they have genetic, con well, consistent genetic conditions inherited, especially for purebred dogs. So things like heart conditions, um, uh, spinal issues in things like um, dachshunds and hip problems, movement problems, arthritis. There's a lot of these um, conditions that we know are inherited, especially along purebred dog breeds. So this is why we think it's actually better to kind of stop maybe continuing to breed these purebred dogs now, trying to make more mixed breeds and trying to open up the gene pools a bit to try and reduce these instances of health issues and genetic diseases.